Hi everybody, it's Lori here with Pollinator Garden Fun. This is a video in my series called the Pollinator Plant Spotlight. And this video series will focus on a single pollinator friendly plant. And that could be either as a nectar plant or host plant, or it could be both. Today's video is gonna focus on bone set or Eupatorium perfoliatum. It's also called common bone set. And I grew this for the first time in my pollinator garden this year, and I had quite a bit of success with it. Boneset is in the aster family, and it is native to the eastern USA and parts of Canada, and actually as far west as Texas, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. Uh, you can see this map here shows its native range. The reason it's called perfoliatum is because if you look at the leaves here, they actually, it looks like the stem pierces right through the leaves instead of having each one attached to the stem. Boneset is a plant that grows about four to six feet tall, it's supposed to be around four feet tall. Mine got quite a bit taller than that. The stems and leaves are very fuzzy and at the top it's covered in tiny little white flowers. The bone set will bloom basically from July through October. It's a very long blooming plant and late blooming plants are great for pollinators because you can give those stragglers uh, and some late waking pollinators something to feed on. Bone set is wildly attractive to many, many pollinators. There are some specialist bees that use this, such as the hairy banded mining bee and the cloudy winged mining bee. And boneset is also a larval host plant for many, many kinds of moths and some butterflies, including the bordered patch butterfly, the pearly underwing, and the boneset borer, just to name a few. So this is a very important plant for pollinators and for a larval host plant. Boneset is pretty low maintenance and actually quite easy to grow. It does like sun to partial sun. Uh, I've also read it can take uh, more shade too, so I might try putting a clump in a shadier area and see how it does. It doesn't require any kind of special soil. It does tend to like a little bit of a moister soil, I don't have mine in anything special other than just straight up garden soil, not even any fertilizer added to it. But I did keep the bed well watered this year since it's just getting established. So it didn't really dry out very much, but it grew fine with very little attention. Now I bought bare root plants and they bloomed the very first year. And in fact, they grew, you know, four to six feet tall. Uh, but if you start them from seed, it could take two years before you'd see a bloom. I'm going to The stems are pretty sturdy, and they stood really well on their own for almost the whole summer until we had a bad storm, and that kind of bent them and made them lean over. So at that point, I did have to give them some support with some stakes and string just to keep them from flopping over too much. Um, they really can do well in the back of a garden bed just because they are so tall. But since they are so sturdy, you could kind of put them just as a centerpiece like I have in mine. I do have some other plants around them like New Jersey tea and some pussy willow, which will probably help give them a little additional support as they get taller. And next year, I'll probably give this some staking again just to make sure it doesn't fall over. So leave me a comment and let me know if you have any bone set in your garden or if you plan on adding any. This is such a great pollinator plant and I really think everybody should find a little space for it in their garden beds. Talk to you later.